Hi, today in the Sparkle Garage Workshop, we build this modular, expandable plane tail. Let's get started. This project started because I needed some way of storing the Stanley planes I've slowly been collecting. So I started with a number five, and then I bought a number three, and then I bought a number four, and then I bought a nine and a half, and then I found this 220. So these are just some planes that I've been picking up, so I needed a design that would work with that. So rather than build a single large plane tail that kind of locks me into a certain number of planes or a certain design of those, I decided to build something that was more modular where I could add on sections as I bought more planes. And this is the design I came up with. I'm going to start cutting down all the sheet goods um, following the plans. It's important to realize that each plane tail is a different width. So you really need to mark and label all your parts because if you intermix them, uh, they're not going to assemble right. The sides and the quarter inch plywood is all the same, but the actual half inch and three quarter inch plywood pieces, every plane tail is a different width. So check your plans carefully. So here you can see I've marked every single piece as to where it goes. So I know which number plane is each board fits which plane. Next, I'm gonna cut the pieces down on the miter saw. Now any pieces that call for a bevel on the plans, I recommend you cut them about a half inch long because you're gonna trim them up at the table saw with a miter gauge. Okay, here you can see I've set the angle to basically eight degrees off of 90, so 82 degrees. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut the miters on, on the actual cable saw using a miter gauge. Now I could cut these on the actual miter saw, but for me, this is more accurate. And uh, the way the dust collection is set up on my miter saw, I don't like to change it because it I'd have to remove it to be able to make these miter cuts. So I'm gonna go through and make the uh, miter cuts in the plain board, the top piece, and the, the bottom edge. So those are the three pieces that need miter cuts. Okay, here I have all the pieces uh, lined up and marked, and they're all stacked in, into exactly what plane till they belong to. And like I said, it's important to keep them marked because each, each plane till is a different width. Next, I'm just gonna run a sanding block over the edges and smooth everything over to get rid of any kind of jaggedness and uh, it should be ready for glue up. So the first step in assembly is we need to countersink uh, six holes. So I'm gonna drill two holes in the plane board and then we're going to drill four holes into the backboard, so one in each corner here. Next, I'm going to apply glue along the bottom edge of the backboard and the bottom edge, or basically the back edge of the bottom. So we're going to glue those and stick those together, and then I'm going to use an angle clamp and just some spring clamps to kind of um, hold those in place while I can get the screws dr drove in. Um, it's important, I went through, and you'll see here, I'm going through, and sorry about the angle, I realized my camera had shifted, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take like a, a 3 30 second drill bit and I'm gonna drill all the way into that wood. So when I drill that one and a half inch screw in, I don't split those plywood fibers apart because I wanna maintain as much strength here as possible. And so that's what I'm doing here. Um, if you need to, you can actually use a brad nailer to kind of brad nail to hold everything in place while you get those screws in as well. And you'll see I do that on the top. So with the bottom attached, I'm gonna go ahead and basically glue the um, the plane board in place. So I apply glue on all the ed mating edges, kind of smear it around a little bit. And I always make sure I put a lot of glue anywhere where there's kind of ed end grain of that plywood. And I'm gonna kind of line everything up and then I'm gonna basically drill the screws into the bottom. Um, if I need to, I can use the, like I said, use the brad nailer to hold things in place where I can get those screws, uh, screw holes pre-drilled and then drive in those screws. And once again, the camera shifted on me and I didn't realize that it shifted while I was filming this until I looked at it later and I was already done. But that's basically what I did. And then I, if I flip it upside down, now this is the back side. And here I'm just using some smaller screws. You think these are like three quarter inch screws and I'm driving those into the back here at the top. So that's the top corner, that's the bottom. Um, now once everything's done, we can move on to the next step here, but I'm gonna go ahead and sand everything up a little bit and apply some glue on the top. And then I'm gonna apply the top panel. And then that just gets attached with, here I'm using my pin nailer, and I'm just gonna go through and drive some pins in to hold that in place. And once that glue dries, it'll be plenty strong. It's the screws that are holding everything in, you know, more permanently anyway. Same thing at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and put this bottom ledge on that supports the bottom of the plane. And we're gonna glue that in place. And then I'm gonna go through with the pin nailer and drive some pins in, and that will support everything and back that glue up. But once that glue dries, it's gonna be plenty strong. And then I'm just gonna kind of wipe everything down. Now we're not gonna put any of the planes that need, um, a spacer, we're not gonna put those spacers in yet till we're all done. So here I'm just rapidly going through and building the other five.
Okay, with the core structure built, now we're gonna basically use the core structure to be able to kind of make marks and, and figure out how big the sides need to be. Um, and so what I'm doing here is just marking some pencil lines. Uh, if I could find a pencil that works, there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark this, and then I'm just gonna flip the plane over and use the back side as a straight edge, because I don't have a straight edge, it's more than 24 inches. And I'm just gonna strike a line here. I'm gonna cut this on a track saw, or basically with a straight edge on a circular saw. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but just try to give me a guide of where to cut at. Um, here I've got my, I've got this Craig saw, uh, Craig straight edge with a saw, and I'm cutting this. This thing makes a hell of a mess because it throws dust everywhere. There's no dust collection. Now, once I have one of these cut, I can use that. That's going to become my master. And what I'm going to do is use that to basically cut all the other parts out with. So I've marked this one on one side with an M, so I know that's my master. And then I'm going to go through and just with the, uh, with the circular saw, I'm going to go through and cut all the other pieces. So this just kind of goes pretty quickly. I'm just going to cut and start stacking them up here, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, with all the sides rough cut, I need to trim off the points there. So what I'm going to do is take each one of the, the plain till cores, and I'm going to lay it over a side and mark it, and then I'm going to write the number the number for that plain till on it so I know which pieces go to which. There might be slight variations in every single one of them, depending on how my cut quality was. So I want to make sure everything lines up nice and neat. Back over the miter saw, and now I'm just going to trim off all those points. Okay, time to uh, assemble the sides. Here it's going to just take uh, copious amounts of glue. So I'm going to glue it up really well, spread the glue around. Um, since this is end grained plywood, I'm going to be very generous with the glue. I can always wipe the squeeze out. And then I'm just going to go around with a pin nailer and pin nail everything in place. Now, if you wanted to, you could pin nail it and then follow it up with clamps all the way around and wait for that glue to dry. You know, I just didn't have time for that. Um, and I don't think I, I literally had enough clamps to be able to clamp that many of these plain tills. So uh, I, I, I just think it's going to be enough with just the, uh, the brad nails. Here I'm actually using a piece of scrap um, to be able to make a line so I can kind of see where that plain till board rides underneath um, that side. And that just gives me a place to so I know exactly where to put the actual brad so I don't shoot through by accident. And with that, I'm going to wipe down all the glue. I'm going to flip it over, and now I'm going to glue the other side exactly the same way. So apply a big heavy bead of glue, put the side on, pin nail it in place, mark that side board so I know where to put the sides, put the, uh, the brads in, and then I'm just going to zip through all these other ones and do them all really quickly. So each plain till needs two cleats to hang on the wall. And what I've done here is I've actually marked and cut them out of the same board that I've made the plain board out of because the widths have to match. And because every plain till is a different width, it's important to keep track of all these. So you see I've written numbers on all these. At this point, we're only going to attach the top the uh, top cleats. So I'm going to kind of get them all in place. And the next thing we need to do is we need to basically drill some pilot holes in each of them. So I'm here, I'm countersinking some holes, two in each one. I'm going through and doing the entire stack and putting them right back where they go. And next we'll move on to attaching those top cleats. And now I'm going to go ahead and attach those uh, top cleats with one and a half inch wood screws. The location of the bottom cleats is going to differ depending on the spacing and the size of your actual cleats on your wall. So in this case, I'm going to hang the cleat or hang the uh, each till on the wall. Go ahead and stick the bottom cleat on the uh, cleat towards the bottom, and then just take a pencil and mark that mark the edge of it, so I know exactly where I need to actually screw that into the bottom of the till. And I'm going to repeat that for all the other ones. And with the location of the bottom cleats marked, I can go ahead and just basically screw those in place. I'm now going to go ahead and set my planes in their respective tills. And I want to do this so I can mark the top edge of where that plane is going to rest. And then I can know where to put the actual dividers in. And I kind of want to go up about three half inch to three quarters of an inch above each of the planes to give me a little wiggle room. Um, the placement's not exact here, but I wouldn't snug it up too tight or it's going to make it hard to get the plane in and out. And then I just glue and brad nail the dividers in place, just like the bottom edge. And I repeat this on plane tills three, four, and five because there's space for another plane above those. So I put another set of dividers in. Next, I need to mark locations where the magnets are going to be installed. They're going to support the plane so they don't fall off. Um, so here I'm actually going through and I'm marking a location slightly below where the blade comes out of the plane. Now, this is a 5C plane. It's corrugated. Um, so because of that, I'm actually putting two magnets in here on this 5C. 
it also is uh, it's a longer heavier plane as well so because of that I kind of want two magnets to make sure it's more secure these small little uh, block planes only need one as well as the number three and number four only need one so here I've actually drilled the hole I want the magnet to be just slightly below the surface and then I can test it to make sure it locks in place nice and tight and then I can re repeat the process with all the other ones uh, pre-drilling the one inch hole with a Foster or a Forstner bit and then inserting the screw that holds each of the magnets in place Next, I'm just going to test how well the uh, the magnets work to hold the planes in place, and uh, it's a nice, satisfying clunk as the magnet engages everything. Okay, with that, we're going to give everything a nice, quick, final sanding. I bought these three-quarter inch labels off of Amazon. Those and the magnets, the links are both in the description below. But I'm going to give it a little bling, so I'm going to mark each of the tills with which, uh, which plane is supposed to go where, so I kind of know. Um, so not necessary, but I kind of like the look of it, and they're they're cheap and easy. It's so, and I'm not, not going to try to do this by hand because I don't have the, the talent to do it. So some three quarter inch stickers work fine for me. So I'm just working my way around and marking each of the plane tills. Okay, and with everything marked, I'm going to go ahead and hang the plane tills on the wall here and uh, test everything out. You can hear the nice satisfying clunk as each one of those goes into place where they're supposed to go. The neat thing about this design is it's modular. So for example, if I'm never gonna own a number seven, well, I just don't make a number seven and I can slide the number eight over. And if I have a number six and a number eight, it goes there. Then let's say I ended up buying a number seven and I already have a number six and a number eight. Well, I could just kind of put number seven back. Um, or if I buy any other planes, I can do that. So rather than build something, trying to figure out what I'm gonna need in the future, I could just build these modules as I need them and kind of drop them into place and this can grow with my collection. Okay, and there we have it. A plain till that can grow and shrink with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can uh, see the utility of this. Now when I'm done with this, I'm not gonna leave all these on the wall. I'm gonna take probably six, seven, and eight down until I actually acquire those planes, whenever that may be. You'll notice those no, there's no one or two up here. Well, I didn't win the lottery and those those, those planes are stupid expensive and they're impractical. They're, they're almost made for children, they're so small. So I, I don't see a number one and a number two in my future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you uh, like this video, give me a like. It really helps me out and lets uh, YouTube know I'm doing a good job. Uh, if you got a comment, I like your comments. Leave me a comment. I try to reply to just about every comment. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. That'll let you know the next time I put out another video. Thanks everybody. Get out in the garage and do something. Bye.